Okay guys, today's video, we're gonna install this Volkswagen level one, level two charger. And I have been using uh, the level one setup for a little bit, although it takes forever. Today we're gonna install the level two. I pretty much got everything I need. Um, I got about a 25 foot run. I got 30 foot of conduit. I got some 90s, got more 90s if I need them. A couple 45s, that's just one. I got more now, I got connectors hangers junction box outlet cover and i think i pretty much got everything i need i'm missing a couple things and we'll grab that in a minute the outlet and the breaker we're going to use for this setup but before we jump into this really quick i want to talk about or put emphasis on the level one charger use one of my friends was charging his ev at his house uh, on a level one charger um, on a outlet similar to this 15 amp GFCI protected and he told me after about four or five hours he smelled something like it was burning and I told him that I wish he would have called me beforehand because I wouldn't have recommended and although this is GFCI protected uh, there's other lines on this circuit it's not designated and I told him with anybody I would recommend it for anybody to uh, use level one charger and make sure the outlet is designated although these outlets may be GFCI protected. There's other lines on that circuit. You know, you don't know how many wires are in that conduit. Hence the lack of heat dissipation. And I also told him that uh, although they're GFCI protected and there's a breaker at the end uh, in the panel for these outlets, um, the wires will burn and fuse before the breakers trip. And that he should look into, if he's going to continuously charge on a level one charge, that he should look at maybe calling me over to install a designated uh, outlet for his level one charger because there's nothing in the house drawing that type of current for so long you talking 50 hours uh, usage for a full charge or half that just to get a decent level charge with level one charger um this outlet here is designated to my welder it's a 20 amp outlet with 10 gauge wire ample enough um to run my welder and uh, my charger loves it the level one charger we were using for our uh, before I installed the level two was perfect. You know, this was perfect for it. This is the perfect setup for it. And of course I could have used 12 gauge wire, but this was perfect. So this is the section I'll be in here somewhere. I know I'll be coming out of here in a basement in the area of the basement. It's adjacent to this. So I'll be coming out of here somewhere in this vicinity and I'm gonna come up just mapping it out and, and I'm a curve and how the charger sets up how it mounts uh, the plug comes through the top so I'm gonna move this over to here and uh, I'll have it a 90 here and have it somewhere here holster here for the charger itself uh, to mount onto and yeah I'm just doing it as I go so at the end of the video I will have some tips and recommendations but right now let's jump to the video so let me show you guys some things we need to grab we need this 50 amp industrial outlet we have a general electric or GE service panel in the basement GE breaker so we're gonna take these over here with us and we need a drill some spade a spade a couple spade bits I'm gonna need light some charge right now a look cordage drive torque wrench but we're gonna use uh, my torque driver screwdriver and yeah let's get over here and put everything out the way bear with me guys i should have had this stuff ready uh, get a battery for the drill let's go oh i got the wire let's go get the wire i bought the wire in some months back and um, i'll talk about that as well i gotta find the wire i bought, I bought the wire a minute ago should be up here somewhere oh we are making a mess yes, I don't know where the wire is old dryer plug there we go this is the 
wire specifically bought for that job, although I had enough wire for this job. So here's some of the last things I've done. Uh, here's this entire pole barn after they built it a couple years ago. I did all this, I zoned the lights out, whereas the switch turns off one side and the other. Uh, they're zoned out. Yeah, but this is the last thing I did. So now that we got this cleared up, before I move that, let me show you in the basement what we got going on and uh, the run I need to make. Okay, so we're down here. Show you guys the run. This is the joist we're gonna be coming through. That's the other one, yeah, both of the other lines. Coming here, here, over there, there, up over there, there, round, and in a box somewhere here. I'm guessing within this area, I think I've, uh, one issue coming there. So the thing is, I'm not. I'm gonna run probably a 90 here. Cause I don't want to run it under the joist and then come over there, uh, over top of that conduit, on top of the the duct. We're gonna run a come through a hole, spot on, and drop down there. Make that turn and go. So here's the service panel, 200 amp service panel, GE. And here's our slot. There's a few sections in this panel. You guys can see one here that has no load on it. And I think the current owner had something here um, that was supposed to go there and that's not the case. There's a couple of them like that, but that's here nor there. We're not talking about that. So this is our slot. Gonna knock those tabs off, gonna remove the cover, and then we're gonna um, get started, make our run before we run any wire, before I trip the main breaker to shut the system down. But, you know, we got this uh, large panel here we gotta remove. So, uh, we gonna need this, but we are gonna need something out of here. Yes, I get some more. I don't got much left. I'm using trim tool, trim removal tool. Super easy. Move the staples out the wall without damaging the wire itself. Move the opener there, here, and I'm gonna fix this up. I'll tie these in with the other wires so they'll look as one. And um, yeah, we. We're good there now. So let's uh, find a placement for the charger. I should clean this wall. The wall is, is, this wall is nasty. Let me clean this wall a little bit too. I know this is the garage. This is where I work at. So uh, let me try to do something here before we put the charger okay. up. I'm trying to find the placement where I'm gonna put this at. But I wanna see where I'm gonna come out at. So let's go down the basement and drill out our hole. I'll be using one recording spray bit. I got a one inch, but that's not gonna work. One recording spray bit. Okay, we open the garage. Let's see where we at. Oh man, we're spot on. We're pretty much exactly. Where I want to be at. This is exactly where I want to be. Right here in this vicinity. Okay, we have uh, this 90 here for a reference. I'm not going to use this. I'm going to try to get a much cleaner look. Something on the lines of this. Just a much cleaner look opposed to that sticking out like so. Although I could make an offset bin to bring the conduit to the wall. And this will save me 
a box from installed in there, but a more flush look would be a box to the wall, um, conduit running off of it to where I'm coming here with the 90 over to the spot for the charger to plug into. Let's go remove the panel in the basement so we can start our run with the conduit. So I need some conduit to start our run. Okay guys, I have the service panel cover removed. Here's the, here's the panel. It's about four feet long. This panel is about four feet long. Uh, I won't be coming in from the top up there. I'm gonna come in from here. I got my one inch knockout in the center. I'll use a pre-cut 90 to start it before I make my run. So it'll be like so going up there. And I have to get to this joist. So I'm going to come under there. I'm going to come between those uh, two conduits and come out here and go out that way. I'm going to move this shelf out the way so I can have the space I need. Okay, got the shelf moved out the way. I'll knock this out. Got two tech wheels there. It's going to pop it here. Twist it out really quick. And I, I haven't cut the power yet, but I'm not messing with anything. I'm just going to knock this out so I can start my run. Uh, just be careful. We got wiring over here. Okay, we got that in. So now let's, I mean, we get some measurements and we're gonna work our way through here. So I'm gonna align where I'm coming at here. So let me get all that set up and I'll be back in a second. Okay, guys, I'm done with my run. There, got a nice little offset beer in there to get as close as I can to the beam or the joist. We support it there, got the connector there. See how I got the screws turned out facing me. Kind of try to have things symmetrical, but we support it there and we're not supported here, but we're fine. We're supported by the joist there. I may use a nail strap here, but this is super firm, very tight. And you can see the angle of screws just like the other one try to keep some symmetry here and that is nice let me go to the garage and show you what i've done there but yeah i may use a nail strap there and that's uh i think i got one. Oh, that's one something that's what that's called a nail strap i do want to note um how important it is to ream the conduit when you cut it or even the conduit that's pre-cut already you want to ream it uh, really well I use this and I use this and I use that so they're on the back of these uh, tube cutters or pipe cutters they're there so yeah make sure you ream them out really good because you don't want on sharp edges uh, that are shred that sheathing off that wire when you pull or push through so let me show you guys what I've done to go out okay so here we go here, already screwed in. I try to make sure everything's uh, square and, and even and you know, doing these things. And another thing that I prefer or I recommend uh, is just having round edge boxes. Like so, this is a rectangle, but it's round edges opposed to these sharp edges. Uh, but this is all I have with the one inch knockouts because uh, it is kind of exposed, although uh, no kids will be in this area but it eliminates somebody getting injured on these sharp edges opposed to this. You can see the difference from this corner is sharp and this is rounded. I prefer a round box and I got quite a few of them, but this is a, a deep one, and but it only has uh, half an inch knockouts. And I could have got one with three quarter inch knockouts and kind of made it work for my application but just going to use those definitely recommend or prefer the rounded edge boxes 
uh, in exposed areas like so. I just want to note that. But now, since I've come through here, I'm gonna knock this out. I don't wanna come straight up here, this one. Knocking this one out so I can come wrap around here. But this is where I wanna pull the wire. I wanna push the wire through or pull it from the panel through here. And I'll tell you why. You don't wanna pull the entire pull through a 45 or a 90. You just wanna pull through as straight, much straight way as possible. And um, then if your 45 or 90 is towards the end, that's fine. But you don't wanna take the entire pull through a, a 90 degree uh, bend or a 45 degree bend. You wanna try to take it uh, through this straight part. So this is where the wires will be pushed through to the panel. And um, I'll be doing that in a second here. I'm gonna run up, it's probably about right here, and have a 90 degree here. Box will be, the outlet will be mounted here. Charger under here, because you can see how, how it is. And it plugs on top of it, so I can mount the charger underneath it in its vicinity. Holster here, so that's the goal. Charger here, holster here. for all around we got everything just even both ends take the magnetic and flush everything is there we got uh, offset being here for this so this can go directly into the box and we got an offset being here just for a clean install. We're all good and we're tight. Every connection is very tight. Very, very tight. All right, we time for us to pull some or push some wire through and I'm gonna use some wire lube and yeah, we should be all good. But uh, it's a wrap for the run. Pretty decent, I'm happy. So the charger is gonna mount here. I may put the holster on this side to save some space here, I don't know. The holster may go here, but the charger's gonna go here. So to avoid from just pulling away from the charger, maybe we can pull from here with the Holster, but um, yeah, nice, very nice. All right, guys, it's time for us to pull wires through so we can get through. But I think I'm gonna push them through. This is short, such a short run, it's only about 25 foot run from here to the box. Once we get to the box from here, we should be good. This is easy, but this wire is so thick, I think I can push it through. Look at my little setup. <laughs> I got some records to kind of divide my wires and got a little weight in each crate and we're going to got some nice distance and we're going to pull this thing through. So I'm going to push the two hot ends first and then I'll push the ground and the neutral end 
second. You know, we got an eight gauge brown. I could have had an eight gauge neutral, but this came with the set for a decent price. So uh, we should be all good. We're pushing through one inch conduit and use the trick out. I'm just gonna shoot as much as I can in here. I'm gonna fill this up. <laughs> and yeah, we should be able to push this through. So uh, let me get this down here. I got much in here, but. Let me shoot some more in there, mount the camera, and we're gonna see if I can push this through. I'm pretty sure I can though. I think I'm through. Let's go down here and see. I think I'm through. Oh, we through, we through, we through, we through, we through. We through, we through, we through. We through, we through. We're gonna pull it some more, look at that lube. We're lubed up. Running through that smooth. All right, let's push the other through. Let's pull this through some more. Look at that lube. A little bit more. That's probably enough. About the length of this box. May come out a little bit more. Alright. That's more than enough. That's more than enough. All right, let's uh, uh push the other one through. Oh, I have to change glove, put a rubber glove on too, because look at that lube all over my end. All right, so we're not going to cut anything. We're going to leave it like that. We'll push the end up. We'll take the remainder of the wire, push it up here, and uh, cut off uh, the access here. But uh, time for... Our second pull. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. I'm gonna pull these through and we're gonna be all good. Okay, that's more than enough for what we need it for. I'm gonna overdo it. All right, let's uh, get out here and run it to the top and then close up so we can start wiring up. All right, so now that we're good at the panel, Pretty much know how much wire I need here. I'll have adequate wire here, um, enough for me to work with the plug. And once I push back in here, the wire will come back and I'll fold it here and place it in here. So we have room uh, to work with. So um, that's the goal. So let me measure out my wire, take my cutting pliers. We're gonna cut buddy off, but okay, I know I kind of overdid it, but 
of a large portion. You're pretty much there. Um, some of this gonna push back in here. You're gonna fold it in, close this off. But um, I did this because uh, I, I gave more than enough to make this work. I wanna make sure I was okay and um, if I need to pull in the basement some more, um, I'll push down some, which I think I'm fine at the panel, but um, I like to cut off a little bit more than I need always. Better more than less, trust me. All right, this is what we have left over. We should be about 15 for the wire left for some odd job, but I'll put this in the pile. All right, uh, that's, we can install the plug right now. That's what we can do before we go down to the basement, to the panel and do the breaker. So we can install the plug here, close this off. Okay, so here's our outlet. Here's the brand, model number. We can install the wire in here first. I like to put the outlet on the cover. Uh, I want to note it can't go this way, it has to go because the screws don't line up. That way it line up. So let's do that right now. Get each one of them started just a little bit. Allen, these are Allen. It's an Allen key or Allen bit for those. Torque screwdriver. Let's get our wire stripped out and cut first, and then we'll measure. All right, so these require to be torqued down at 75 inch pounds. What we're gonna do is go 50 inch pounds first, 50 inch pounds, and then wait for a little bit, and then we'll go back around and do 75 inch pounds. So we'll do two steps with this, 50 inch pounds, and then we'll come back with 75 inch pounds. Okay, and our first level torque down. See, notice how the wires, I removed the black wire back because I want it orientated how it um, comes out of the uh, conduit uh, to run under each wire. So you guys will see how it is when I flip it over. But uh, yeah, we're pretty much there. Um, we gotta remove these screws, but all these are torqued at 50 inch pounds. Now let's go to 75 inch pounds right now. What that initial torquing does is, uh, those are stranded wires, so it, it compresses them. It, it puts tension on them, and once the tension settles, uh, we apply uh, the new torque spec, and um, it should be torque to spec then. Let's uh, do the final torque specs right now. We get the ground first, then the neutral, then each hot.
All right, so right for that, now let's place it in the box. Put a little uh, lube there or glide there so it can the wires can push back in easy once we push uh, the outlet cover on and screw it in place. When I rotate this, look at the orientation they fall in. That's just what I wanted. The ground to be at the top, how I pushed it through. Okay, I also want to note, although this outlet is grounded through the yoke, I make I want to make sure I got an adequate ground. In the event, um, over time, these screws may come loose with the continuous use, plugging something in and out. And I want to make sure I have an adequate ground. And it may seem redundant, but I don't think it's necessary that you use a ground, whether you're mounting in the box or if you're using conduit, which this is technically grounded through the conduit because this is ran directly to the panel. And like I said, it may seem redundant that I'm using the ground, but I definitely recommend using a ground. You don't have to be an eight gauge. So let's push this in and Looks really nice. It's really nice. Now we're gonna cover this up. The kind of wires came in, and um, this is perfect. Now we're gonna put the uh, face plate over this, like so. Clean look, that's nice. All right, I'm gonna mount the charger here, and then we're gonna go in the basement, install the breaker, and power this thing up. Okay, I thought I had the camera rolling when I was mounting uh, the bracket for uh, the charger itself. Now, I just uh, took uh, my leveler, and as you see, that's perfectly even. Did the same for here, made a hole for the anchors, and now I'm gonna install this. Let me show you guys what this is. This is the amount for the plug. Here it is right here. Little cheap little setup. This base is metal. It may look a plastic, but this is metal. And this goes with it as well. Just a simple design. For cheap, nice, super simple to install. <clears throat> I guess I'll finish with the install. I guess the hardest part of this is making sure uh, it's level and square. I want a clean look with this, so let's finish installing this. I'll do that on camera right now. This goes on first. And this goes on. This faces the top. That's what it mounts like so. Screw.
I'm gonna face this towards the top, the small, the larger section, because it uh, hooks onto it, and I'll show you guys in a second. Okay, guys, it's time for us to install the breaker. Gonna shut the panel down and um, get started. I got a headlamp on right now. It's my headlamp. Um, it runs by, by a lithium battery, but um, we're gonna put another magnetic light there in the event somehow uh, this dies on me. We'll have light because I'll be in total dark down here when I installed it. Just wanna. Have some redundancy here, but putting an extra light just to back up this one. So uh, let's get started. I'm gonna shut the power down first at the main breaker, and then we're gonna go to wiring up uh, the breaker. Let me show you guys what I got over here. So here's our breaker, uh, some tools I'll be using, and uh, my magnet light. You can attach this right now. I'm gonna put it just above here. It's a snap on light. Pretty bright too. Let's angle it a little bit. That's pretty good. Give us some extra light. And oh, we got my headlamp. So let me mount the camera and let's get started. Okay, we got all of our wire stripped, ground connected. So the breaker goes here. Here it is. I just expanded the neutral that comes out of the breaker. Hot here, hot here. The neutral goes here from the load. This neutral goes here. We're gonna test this here, just above. Down in the open slot right there. And we're gonna to torque these lugs down to 20 inch pound first. We're ready at 20 inch pounds. And then go a second time at 30 inch pounds. And we should be good to go. Guys, I wanna note, if you do have room in your panel for a double pole breaker, or any breaker, or single pole breaker, I think it's very important um, that you do a low calculation uh, to see if the panel can handle it. Despite the uh, space or it's being vacant <clears throat> or having enough space for uh, the breaker itself, it's very important uh, that you do a low calculation to see if the box can handle it. So I just want to note that um, as I get near to close this video out.
Okay, it's a wrap. We're installed. Pretty good. I did these 30 inch pounds, 20 inch pounds initially, 30 inch pounds. Uh, thereafter, we ran glue and keep the wires away from the screws. The ground is nice. And the neutral there out of the way. And yeah, we're going to power up in a second. A couple of things I do want to show you guys. Um, the panel. Knock out those two. So get bear with me guys. Alright, we're good with that. Also, I'm gonna place a couple stickers in here that came with the GFCI the breaker. Just a maintenance schedule for testing it monthly. Um, they recommend you test it in monthly intervals and kind of mark it. So this will be uh, the first one, tw first line, 2024, March 22nd. So I just put the 22nd here, 2024, because I'll do an initial test to it and so forth and so on um, as you move along, testing it each month. So um, they definitely want you to test it each month. So we'll place both of these stickers in the panel. When we get it up, but we're in the dark now. So that's, uh, we're gonna power up the main switch before we start that. We also gonna do a test on it and trip it. After we check for power to our, um, at the line, we mount the camera so we can power back up the house. All right, powered on, pretty easy to power on. Uh, let's go ahead and test the outlet. All right, so here's the setup. We're good to go. We'll be charging thereafter. After we test it, we're going to do initial charge. The car is low, and we're going to run the data um, for that as well. Um, as far as the electricity and how the bill increased or how the monthly usage increased when we use the charger and when we're not using the charger. In relative to the outside temperature. All right, that's our test for voltage. Perfect, 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 perfect. We got perfect measurements, perfect readings, guys, perfect readings. All oh, good. So um, you want to test here to see how much current is pulling, uh, which is 240. It's actually 242. And um, here to the neutral and each hot to see you getting your 120 from each side. Okay, I'm gonna, smack, I'm gonna slap the panel back on and I'll be back to show you guys where I placed the sticker at and marked it. Oh, let's, you know, let's test it. Let's go trip it right now before I um, attach the panel. Let's go trip it. All right, so to trip it or to test it, let's go check for power. We know most likely we don't got no power and I'll show you guys how to reset it as well. Okay, let's see what we got. 
Of course, we're not going to have anything, but just for video purposes. Nothing, nothing, nothing. All right, let's uh, go reset the breaker and then we'll um, I'll install the panel and we can shut this video. I'll, give you, I'll leave you guys with a couple tips or some tips and recommendations before, we, before I close the video out. All right, back down. So in order to reset it, all you have to do is back this way, back on, you got power. I'm gonna uh, trip it right now because we don't, I don't need it right now. And uh, we'll be charging the car uh, shortly to get some data. Okay, got the panel back on. I was gonna record it, but uh, took a, a couple minutes to do. And I also installed these stickers uh, for reference. And I wrote the install date, posting and marking the date I tested. So this is the initial installation date. And if we sell the house, they know when this thing was installed, when the setup was installed. We got the other warning. I know my light is doing that. Sticker here. But yeah, we're all good now. So it looks nice. So now let's, let's charge the car. I want to show you a couple things before I close out. Uh, we're going to show how the time, uh, we're going to do a level one charge and a level two charge. We'll show the time, uh, just initial time when we plug in both to see the difference and uh, how fast it'll charge uh, using either or. So uh, that's the next thing. Okay, let's get in the car, let's check some readings, guys. Let's see what we're reading in this thing. Let's see what the battery level is. It's time for us to get some data. Okay, we're at 35%. And let's uh, go over here and get a charge going. Okay, so we pulled up at the garage. That's our percentage. Uh, let's so see, we're gonna do an initial charge for the level one charger. Uh, this is a heavy duty extension cord. We're just gonna use it for an initial reading purposes. So we're just gonna unplug this. Set this right here. Plug this boy in. And we're gonna get an initial reading. Let's get prayer. Let's uh, open us up. We're gonna get that initial reading and see where we get it. Just seeing our numbers here. That's all we're looking for, numbers. So let's uh, check the data from the car. Let's see where we at. So here's the length over there. Let's check some data right now. Let's see what we get. Okay, okay. <sighs> Look at the time left. I want to note that time left is for only 80% and I didn't put emphasis on there, but I'll talk about it later. I think I'll go back and show what it would be at 100% charge rate. Oh wow. Let's try to get to the main menu. Here we go. So now we got our initial data from this. This is level one charging. We're about to use our newly installed outlet. So let's see what we got for level two. Let's see the difference. Let's see how significant it is. Oh, 
All right, we're plugged in. I heard, uh, see it come across my screen that charging has initiated. Are right, we gonna do all this in one motion, one continuous motion? <laughs> so we're pulling. So we chopped down 30 hours of time. You guys can see that is huge. Wow. Wow. Oh, we got to 80%. So let's go up some. Let's see. 400%. I should have did that with the... I'm quite sure the hours would have went up. So we are going to go back to level two. I didn't catch that. Sorry about that. We're going to go up to... 100% to see. So the hours went up to seven hours as expected. That's what uh, you see. That's the data that's out there. So I'm going to go back to level one and we're going to see what the 100% um, charge rate is at the hours. Okay, we're at level one again really quick. Let's do this all in one motion. Let's see what we got. With 100% now, of course. So we're looking at 50 hours compared to several hours. <laughs> That's quite significant. Also, you see the miles on this car. A lot of these miles are for going charging to charging stations. There's some distance from our house to the nearest charging station, and you accumulate that over time, constantly charging. So it's um, a must. I get this installed. Uh, the level one, level two charger came uh, with this vehicle. I didn't have to buy anything. So uh, that was a plus. Um, the last thing we'll get, I may let it run down to 10%. We'll see um, there. But it's 50 hours, several hours, uh, saving uh, mileage. Miles will decrease significantly. Yes, accumulating miles, traveling to all these electric stations. And um, another thing, you're time consuming. You just can't go put 20 on pump five and you're in and out. You have to wait for a while. So there's time consuming. So a lot of pros are with the home charger, although it is, it's not as quick as a level three charger. It does allow you not to consume so much time um, that you can be doing other things with because time is extremely valuable and uh, less accumulation for miles. A couple tips before I close out this video. And uh, we may get the percentage down to see how it'll be, but you guys kind of got an idea. We're going to go to 100% only for this initial time for some data. From here on out, after this initial charge to 100%, uh, we'll keep it at 80% uh, so the battery can stay at uh, optimal performance. Okay, we're ran. I'm plugged up. That's a plug I plug in. Charger is on. Let's check the car. Okay, we're gonna go to 100% today. Since four hours and 55 minutes to go to 80. Let's go up to 100. It says 752. So tomorrow morning we'll try to see if it's exact with that. I know temperature may have something to do with it. Uh, it's pretty cold out. It's 32 degrees. And like I said, it's 12 or 38 a.m. in the morning. So Sunday and our last day of testing and charging. So we're gonna go to 100 percent All right, be back in the morning. Okay. It's uh 752 on the head. Let's see where we at. 753 now. So it's 8.03. We're a little off. 20 minutes off. So I'll be back at 8.03 and we'll be done with it. All right, I'm a little late getting back out here. So I think it's like 8.15 or something like that. This is the last day for me recording data. I'm going to plug this thing. We're completely done. 100%. And you can see those miles are low. You can tell it's pretty cold out this morning. 
A15, 39. Let's unplug and um, from here on out, we'll be charging at 80%. Of course, we'll help the life of the battery. It's recommended as well. So we just want to do this for this initial charge. Finally at the house, we got a full complete charge. And as the weather get better, these miles are gonna increase. Our charging times will decrease. All right, that's unplugged and um, I got the data I needed. So I'll be closing the video out in a second. So same day, temperature went up. We gotta have 49 today. And of course the miles went up. We're close to what we're projected to get out of this vehicle. So here's the energy cost within a six day span before the level two charge was installed. And as you can see, as the temperatures decreased, the cost increased because the furnace is running to keeping the house warm, of course. And as the temperatures rise, uh, the cost will uh, decrease. So we're going to see what the level two charger does to these numbers um, with the same temperature variations. And we'll see our energy costs when the level two charger is in action. So let me show you guys that data right now. I finished the install of the level two charger Friday, March 22nd, which is the day shown on the screen. And after initial doing the level one, level two charger comparison, I let the vehicle stay on charge for five hours. And if you go back to the previous clip and see what our bill was at 35 degrees outside, it was around 557. So it almost doubled in price for five hours. And the next day was that Saturday. I let the vehicle stay on charge for a couple hours. And you can see it went up a few bucks, a couple bucks. And... The full day was coming up that evening. I knew I was going to let it charge until that Sunday, 12 a.m. to get a full day. And I'll show you guys what uh, we got as far as energy consumption or energy cost for the entire charge. And we started at 38% compared to 35% previously. So here's the data from that. So the cost went up about 9 bucks for uh, those 8 hours, just a little under 8 hours. And you mind, you have to pay attention to temperature variations when dealing with these numbers because the cost will fluctuate. So these numbers are approximate. But just wanted to show you guys that. And I'll leave you guys with a couple tips before I close out this video. Although I could have used three quarter inch conduit for this run, I chose to use one inch conduit for a couple different reasons. The first and main reason is heat dissipation. Although I'm allowed four six gauge wires within three quarter inch conduit, they kind of fit crowded within that three quarter inch conduit despite me using a number eight gauge wire for the ground. The one inch conduit will allow for great heat dissipation within those wires or conductors that gets very hot, uh, especially when using EV chargers. And the second reason is pulling the six gauge wire through the uh, three quarter inch conduit. It's much easier to pull it through the one inch conduit despite the many 90s or 45s you may use within a run it's much easier to pull uh, those conductors through one inch conduit so that's the reason why i chose one inch conduit when i took my electrician's course in 2005 these are the very first two books that i purchased well i didn't purchase any see it was given with the course but this stanley uh, complete wiring guide uh, this book is simply amazing. It's extremely well done, and I highly recommend this to any homeowner. I'm quite sure so. Maybe a little different than it is now, but this book touches on every single topic with electricity. As far as anything you want to install, it shows different tools and um, all these different things about electrical work or install electricity in your home. It's an amazing book, and I highly recommend it to any DIY or any homeowner. Get this in your repertoire. It's one of the better books I've had. I own a lot of books. This is one of the better ones I've owned because it touches on everything in like in the simplest form. It's so well done. I have to give Stanley a lot of credit for this. This book is amazingly done, despite it being specific for wine. It shows some of everything. It touches on some of everything. And uh, although it's a lot of the stuff is basic, it's just a great great book for any homeowner that does a lot of DIY stuff by themselves and um, it explains everything and, and shows you how everything should be properly installed up the code and as far as the NEC I wouldn't recommend the average DIY or homeowner go out and purchase the NEC because a lot of this stuff you can find online and all it does the NEC's sole purpose is to ensure the proper installation of electricity within a dwelling to prevent hazards such as electrical fires and if you did want to purchase it and have it in your possession for your own reference, 
get the new one because it touches on electric vehicles which is still are somewhat in their infancy. I've been extremely passionate about space and universe since I was a kid. I say that to say this, there's this term called the Goldilocks zone where scientists deem the earth to be in position relative to the sun. It's like the perfect spot. And it's a great analogy for me when I'm comparing it to a level two charging. It's not too fast, not too slow. And if you're accustomed to using level three charger and ultimately switch over to home charging on the level two charger, I'll leave you all with some food for thought without getting too technical. Pay close attention to how your battery percentage lasts relative to level three charging. You will be quite surprised to see how much longer the battery percentage lasts, hence longer travel times and battery life. It's a wrap for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys found it helpful. Terrence and I'm out.